Welcome back to the Cardinal Sportscast. I'm your host, Dave Blackford. As we do about twice a month, the subscribers at cardinalsports.com ask me a bunch of questions. I provide the answers, and I don't like wasting time on it. So we're going to go right to the questions right now. All right, let's take a look. Well, let's not look at that. We can look at that later. That's Dylan Sampson right there, actually. Let's play a little bit of Dylan Sampson before we get into the questions. This is the kid that I've been telling you all about from Louisiana. Um, Last week, he ran a uh, 40, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 yard run. So that's the kid I was telling you about who ran like a 10, 4, 8, and 100 meter dash. And uh, one of the resident curmudgeons on the uh, on the board said, oh, in football, you don't run 40 yards on the field, blah, blah, blah. It's just straight line speed. Well, you just saw about 90 yards of straight line speed right there. So, uh, and he wasn't even really running that hard. He was just jogging. And this is Louisiana too. You know what I mean? This ain't uh, – he ain't playing against Pikeville. <laughs> no offense to Pikeville, but I'm just saying. Um, this is some straight line running, some agility. Hold his hand. That's nice. So this is Dylan Sims, 2022, 5.73 star out of Louisiana. Um, he was one of the top targets on the board. You see right there, he just glides past everyone because he's just faster than everyone else on the field. One of the questions, the first question was from Jay Hackness in this chat, okay? And his question was, who are the one to three top targets in the 2022 class for the Louisville staff? I would say Dylan Sampson is one of those targets. I'd say that on the offensive side of the board anyway, he's one of the top three. Um, On the defensive side of the board, I think you have – uh, Kristen Miller, the defensive tackle, um, definitely a kid who gets a lot of attention on social media and fans really like. Um, but I think that he's probably, I think he's probably high on the board for them. They've been putting a lot of effort. They have a lot of work to do. Uh, I'm not saying that they have a great shot at landing him or that he, that Louisville is in their top. It's one of his top schools, but I think that he's definitely high on the board for the cards and somebody worth paying attention to the rest of the way out here. Um, another guy that I would assume is really high up on their board is a, a young man by the name of Jamon Tapp. He is a strong side defensive end. He's, I don't know, I guess he'd be like a three to five technique in Louisville's offense. I wish I could make his film bigger, but Louisville embedded these stupid, I don't know what they did. They took Huddle and just embedded it so you can't go to Huddle anymore and enlarge it. So whatever. Thanks, thanks for uh, making the site stupider. Whoever designed that, good job. Um, anyway, Jamon Tapp, he's from Louisiana as well, and uh, he's, he's a major target for Louisville. You see, he's 103 in the nation, and um, you also have a young man by the name of Zion Branch. He's a safety out of Bishop Gorman in Nevada. Again, same problem. You see, his measurable 6'3", 196, 46 ranked player in the country, fifth in his position, number one player in Nevada. Uh, you see the offer list. I mean, Everybody's offered him at least. I don't know who's still recruiting him, but I mean, he's got every offer he want. There's Bama, there's Auburn, there's Clemson, there's Georgia, LSU, there's Ohio State, there's Ohio State, there's Oklahoma, there's Notre Dame, I mean, there's Stanford, there's Texas AM, there's USC. Everybody's offered this kid, right? So he's high on Louisville's board. He's high on everybody else. However, this kid right here is uh, intriguing. So Jake Q. Hardaway trims his list to six, 17 days ago. Let's see who's on that. Let's see who's on that list real quick. All right. So I guess I guess Louisville's still recruiting him. Last I was told, he's very high on their list. They got Cincinnati, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Maryland, and Oregon. Maybe they just jumped in on him recently. Uh, this was 17 days ago. But dude, 6'3", 185. 
He's a baller. Cincinnati is on that list with Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Maryland, Oregon. That is an odd top six. Very odd. Like, those don't look like the others. <laughs> well, Oregon does, but I don't know. You got three. You got one G5. You got Kentucky, which is a middling SEC school. You got Maryland, which is a bottom tier Big Ten school. Then you got Oregon, Georgia, and Florida, who are, you know, teams you, you consistently see up in the top, you know, maybe five to 15. Georgia's a playoff team. Florida was close. They just can't get by Bama or, or, or Georgia sometimes. Um, just an odd top six. Maybe Louisville still has a shot there. I don't know. Another guy to watch out for is Chase Biddle. Let's see if he has a top six that Louisville is an in, so I look like an idiot. <laughs> um, 16 offers, Chase. Somebody thinks he's going to Oklahoma. Jeff Kitchell. Jeffrey Kitchell. Entering in there. 313. It's weird, huh? Yeah, look at that. There's no rhyme or reason to that. Some news. Mike just piggybacked off of Sam. Sam's a national guy. But Josh heard something in February. Jeff heard something in March. But still no decision um, with him. But I know that I know that Louisville is, is on him as well. So those are the guys. This is the big board right here. So we're talking about who are the top guys. This is these are the names that I've compiled over the last two months. All right. And this is just for me. This is a resource tool that I'm sharing with y'all as to who's on the defensive board. And this is what I believe to be who they want, right? Who they're still recruiting, whether or not they're committed, whether or not you might feel like they have a chance with them, or I might feel like you have they have a chance or whatever. But Kenyatta Jackson from Shamanad Madonna. I think I said that right. Shamanad Madonna. Shaminad. I don't know. Whatever. Big dude, 6'4", 225, real long place with dog position. Keaton Wade, you know, of the Wade twin variety, 6'5", 225, Tennessee. Popeye, 6'3", 220 out of Indianapolis or Indian, Indiana. And Jared Beatty from Illinois. Um, these are all guys that they're pursuing. Um, you got Jamal Tapp, who I talked about, uh, Wilfredo Ibar. Uh, from Connecticut, um, Isaac Ham from Wisconsin. So these are the DN, the typical, you know, three to five technique dudes. Uh, Nose already went through this um, on the hot board. I don't know if you guys read it or not. If you didn't, go click the hot board and check it out. This is the defensive tackle, nose tackle, hot board. Christian Miller, of course, big time guy. Everybody's there after Daniel Lyons. He's 6'5", 285. Felix Hickson, 6'3", 280. Tafi Thomas, 6'4", 325. Chris McClellan, 6'4", 292. Nick Campbell, 6'3", 270. I'd probably put him over here in the, in the defensive end category more so than the nose. I don't know why I have him in the nose, but whatever. I'll fix that later. Then the linebackers, you got Stone Blanton from Mississippi. Caden Turner, who committed to Indiana, but I don't think – I don't think that uh, Louisville is going to back off him. Albert Red is from North Carolina. Uh, you know the staff has their, you know, uh, vinegar barbecue flavored roots out there. Um, and you got Carson Willich from Missouri. Um, those are probably inside linebacker guys. Maybe Albert could play outside. Card is Trey Donaldson. Rodney, Rodney Trey Donaldson from Tallahassee. Um, he's an interesting card prospect. See, he's a four-star outside of the 250 for whatever that's worth. He's got 17 offers. Um, again, the, just because they got those offers doesn't mean those schools are actually re re um, recruiting him. Uh, a month ago, he said he had a favorite. A month in recruiting time is a long time. Uh, Chad got him to say that Florida is the favorite right now. So we'll see about that. But Louisville's on him. They like him. They also like Austin Brown out of Illinois. Um, 6'1", 195. They're, they're trying to flip this kid from LSU. The Terrence Welch from Louisiana. You got Keenan Nelson out of Philly. Um, St. Joe's. You got Jair Hollywood Brown. I hope I said that right. Jair 
Hollywood Brown. Um, he's committed to Ohio State. Been there, been committed since April of 2020. Um, Louisville's in the mix for him. Um, Hardaway went over him. Jakari Henson from Seminole, Florida. Um, he has a twin brother. Jakari also plays basketball. He's a point guard. He's like a three-star. I don't know if he's going to play for, you know, Chris Mack or whatever, but he can play point. He plays point guard in high school, so you got that. Avanian, I don't know how to say that. A. Jones from South Lake, Texas. I know it's lazy. I'm just – Aviani. Aviani. Sounds like, like some bottled water. <laughs> uh, Bryce Anderson from Texas, uh, number 43 player in the country. Is in, they are in pursuit. Um, Zion Branch, number 46. Chase Biddle talked about him. Jaden Gould from um, Bergen Catholic um, and Jaden Bellamy. They're both corners. They play next to each other. I don't know if they're a package deal. I don't know if I believe in package deals. I know Ohio State was recruiting Mr. Gold, Gould back in the day, um, but my computer's moving slow. 38 offers. Oh, boy. Um, it's crazy. His quarterback committed to, I believe, I want to say Angeli. I think he went to Notre Dame. Then he, where did Angeli go? No, was it Penn State? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Anyway, he, he's teammates with Steve Angeli. Um, yeah, Notre Dame committed to Notre Dame from Bergen Catholic. Um, Taiwan Malone is the big time 2021 defensive tackle. I think he went to Ole Miss, um, and their Virgin Catholic Catholic is a powerhouse out in Jersey, uh, to the same extent that St. Joe's is out in Philly. So um, they can start getting kids from there. That's a good look for them. Okay, now let's go back and see what other questions have been asked of the kid. Um, Why is the staff decreasing our efforts in Selah's recruitment? This is why. This is why. All right. And this is the last time I'm dealing with this question because am I going to answer it every week? Am I going to answer it every week? Because I'm pretty sure I've answered it in the last two chats. I've answered it in numerous posts on the board. This is what they want. Okay. This is what they want at nose. They see him as a nose. All right. They think he's too light to play nose. They think he's too, too stout to play uh, the end, right? The end, they want 6'3 or 240, right? They want 6'4 or 220, 6'6, 270. You could put him down in the nose category, maybe, but I think they want those guys out on the edge, right? But this is where they want. They want a nose that's 6'6, 280, 6'5, 285, 6'3, 280, 6'4, 325, 6'4, 292. Nick, like I said, is probably a DN. So say lost 6'2, 260 right now. And Selah's been like 6'2 since I remember him. He might have been six foot flat when he was at no, maybe 5'11 in middle school. And then, you know, he's been 6'2 since he's been like a freshman or a sophomore at, at male, you know, and he hasn't, he's still 6'2. So it's just, he's just a tweener, man. I mean, do you, that's, that's why they already have those guys. Look at who they recruited. Look at who they recruited back when um, Satterfield and them got their very first, they got their very first full recruiting class, right? Remember, they took Des Tell, they took Henry Bryant, and they took the other kid, right? All those dudes are small, undersized defensive tackles. The one kid, Henry Bryant's like six foot flat, right? It's no length there, okay? So it's cool if you have one guy who can shoot a gap, who's quick, right? But you can't have your whole line being that size, right? Like that doesn't make sense. So they've already got three dudes of that size. And they're telling you right now that they're looking for noses. So what's that tell you about those three undersized guys they got? You know, what are we talking about? So Desmond Tell, 6'1", 270, all right? He's shorter than, say, a lot, 10 pounds heavier. Uh, he's probably a lot heavier now. You got freaking Jared Dawson, 6'2", 260. That's, that's say a lot. That's what... They already have him. And and this kid's going to be a junior, a redshirt sophomore. And Selah's going to come sit under him. Like, and then you got uh, Henry Bryant, who's six foot 269. That's why. All right. It's nothing personal. It's just, you know, 
It's redundant at this point, all right? No more say a lot of questions, please. And I'm not getting on you, Vincent, because I don't know if you've asked this before, but it's like, I get this question so much, I'm so tired of it. it like, move on, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they get them. Maybe they get more scholarships available and they, they circle back on them. Or maybe it's too late. He says, screw you, I'm going to Missouri or Cincinnati or Virginia or Purdue, who knows? I forget what he told me. He ain't going to Louisville like, like right now, so I didn't bother. I don't even bother. Um, you shouldn't either. Whatever happened to we only want kids that want to be here? I mean, I don't know. Card fan 59. If we don't have a commitment by blank, it's time to panic. You see these names? All right. So the question is this. Let me not just skip through this. If we don't have a commitment by blank, question mark, it's time to panic. I got to start putting more effort into it. The questions <laughs> like there's a question mark in the middle of the sentence and then a period at the end if you see these guys flying off the board going elsewhere specifically popeye specifically felix hickson um, specifically nick campbell specifically stone blanton uh if you see these guys all these dudes right here start committing elsewhere because these are the ones that they're focusing on. If you see Jalen Lewis fly off the board and go somewhere else, you know, I'm calling those out for a reason. Pay attention. If you see them going elsewhere, panic. But as long as you don't see a little school symbol next to their name, don't panic. It's cool. It's all right. There's, there's not a lot of junior film out there. There haven't been any camps. Half of these kids, the staff hasn't got a chance to really evaluate. They don't know what they're looking at. They don't know who he is. They haven't had a chance to poke the kid with a stick. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta calm down. All right, it's gonna be all right. They'll fill their scholarships out. All right. Is Louisville not making a top ten for Dane Key concerning? As Card Fan Fifty Nine. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. I mean, let's. Let, it's not sugarcoated. Uh, I was told he's their number one guy. They didn't make the top 10. That hurts. That's concerning, right? But on the flip side, at least Dane cut them early so that they can recalibrate and focus on new options at the receiver position. So, you know, say what you want about Dane Key, but at least he didn't string him along when he had no intentions of going to Louisville. Um, so there you go. Um, Shoot six says, what linebacker might be next to visit besides Popeye? I think that would be Stone Blanton. I'm pretty sure um, he told me a while back that he was definitely visiting, and I don't see why he wouldn't. He told me that he has, like, either, like, blood family out here or a friend that he considers family that's, like, an aunt of his or, like, his mom's best friend that lives out here in Louisville. And they all, they, I think he said they've been here before. So I think he'll come back and visit the city for sure. Um, and he's a good player from Mississippi. Uh, you know, I showed him on, I showed him to you guys here on this. Uh, where is it? Here you go. Stone Blanton, 6'3", 215, inside linebacker from Madison Ridgeland Academy. Uh, I've spoken about, I've written about him before. I've spoken about him before. Uh, but I feel like you guys don't, either you don't read what I post on here or you just don't remember it or whatever. But, you know, you see, I wrote about him in 2017. Uh, looks like Michigan State's written about him. I've written about him. Cal wrote about him. So I'll, I'll reach back out to him. I haven't talked to him in a few months. I'll wait a little bit, though. But, yeah, that's 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 the next linebacker I think you need to be looking at. Um Vincent 74 says, do you have any idea who else will be on the official visit list for June? Um, I mean, I don't know. I, I know when you say, do you have any idea who else? Um, I don't know who, who originally you're referring to, to provide the who else. I don't know. But uh, the people that I'm aware of that are supposed to be visiting, Dylan Sampson said he wants to visit as soon as possible. So that's one. Um, Another guy is Stone Bland. I expect him to visit. I expect all these guys. I expect Red and Willich to visit. So those are your three linebackers right there, uh, whoever answered that. I expect um, – I know for a fact that Ty talked to Jalen Lewis, and Jalen said he's going to visit. 
Um, I would expect uh, Jaden Bellamy, Jaden Bellamy to get down here and Zeke Barry. I don't know, he's from California. That might be tough. Um, I don't know. All those kids are far away. Uh, but I, I would expect them to visit. Um, I would expect Austin Brown from Illinois to visit. I think uh, Felix Hilton Hickson talked to me. He said he wants to visit. Tafik Thomas said he wants to visit. Nick Campbell told me he wanted to visit soon. So that could definitely be in June. Um, who else? I, I, the Wade twins have already like come out here on their own dime, so they could show up. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised to see them visit in June. But do you really want a June visit? I mean, do you want Louisville to be the first visit, and then they don't first official visit, and then the kid doesn't get another official visit, and they sign in December? Um, Cardinal Cash says, "Is the South Carolina flirtation have a negative impact on recruiting?" I don't know because I don't ask kids uh, if they're if they're turned off by the fact that Scott Satterfield was interviewing with South Carolina. And I'm sure you don't want me asking that. And I'm sure anyone that works for Louisville would be pissed off if I was asking kids that. So there's no way that I could possibly uh, confirm that unless I did stuff that would make people mad. And I used to love making people mad and being a troll, but you know, I'm trying to chill out my older age, you see the gray. That's a little bit of wisdom, and I'm trying to stop pissing everybody off because it just makes my life hard. Saturday is for the boys, says, with Dane Key out, who slides in as our number one priority at wide receiver, or we, or do we even take one this class with it being so small? Listen, <laughs> the wide receiver position at Louisville, as far as who they're recruiting, changes about as often as Gunnar Brewer changes his socks. It's probably like once every four days, all right? <laughs> so I don't, I don't know, man. Maybe Marquise, Mar Marquarius White from Alabama. I think that would be a guy to watch. Nickname is Squirrel. So Marquarius Squirrel White. I think it's Marquarius White. I don't know. I, I put it in my – check the hot board. I got a skill position hot board. It's one of those guys. All right. Um, are we still planning on taking a quarterback in his class? Yeah, I think they'll take a quarterback in his class. Um, I think it will be the Harrell kid, Connor Harrell. That, that's who I like. But they could also be um, recruiting the Caleb Johnson kid who was ready to commit, but they said, hold on, let's, let's get to know each other a little bit better before we uh, call, you know, call each other a, a, a college and a quarterback couple. And uh, let's go on a few dates. Let's do some Zoom. He tried to commit before he actually even talked to Satterfield. I don't know. So they were like, slow down, baby. All right. East E.K. Chow. E.K.Y. Chow. Satterfield originally said he wanted to prioritize the state in recruiting and get the in-state kids. Do you think they are losing the battle or do you think they are prioritizing out-of-state kids? Um, well, if I said they were prioritizing out-of-state kids then I would be saying that Satterfield is a liar because he originally said he wanted to prioritize the state and uh, recruit the in-state kids, right? So if he's not doing that, that would make him out to look like, you know, it'd be impeachment. So I'm not, I'm not going to put Scott Satterfield on cross-examination. I'm just going to say they're losing the battle. And if you don't think they're losing the battle, they are because they – Dane Key just got cut out of the top 10. Kentucky was in it. Is Dane Key going to sign? I don't know. But you can't say that's your number one guy. And then it's just Grant Bingham just committed. That he's an offensive tackle out of Johnson Central. Um, they're probably going to get Keontae Goodwin, who I consider in-state, even though he moved to Indiana for a year. Say what you will about him, but would you rather – you would rather not have Keontae Goodwin? All of you who are so concerned about the fact that he – transferred so many times or whatever it is you you wouldn't take him if he walked into scott satterfield's office and committed and i wrote a story that said keontae goodwin committed you would comment below oh gosh i don't want this kid he transferred three times so i would say that's a problem uh, uh, uh travion longmire commits to kentucky gavin wimsatz down to rutgers in kentucky and he liked louisville so i don't know what happened there uh, maybe Louisville didn't like him. 
you know. I mean, it's whatever though. Like, I'm 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 not a quarterback guy. I don't know anything about quarterbacks. I'm not saying I can evaluate quarterbacks. No, there's like five people in the world who can. I'm not one of those five. Um, and they're gonna get. Uh, they're probably gonna get Dane Key. I mean, the kid Frederick Douglass, right? The only Frederick Douglass kid to leave that I can remember that could have committed to Kentucky was Walker Parks. You know, Devin Neal went to Baylor, but he didn't have a scholarship from Kentucky or Louisville. So, I mean, man. and then last year, you know, I mean, they got Jared Casey, they got J.J. Weaver, but we know that was, you know, whatever. That, that's the year Bobby got fired. And then they got Dekel Crowdis. They got uh, John Young, who I heard is probably not doing too well out there. <laughs> he's, he's struggling, so that's no big deal. Um, You know, They've been, I mean, you can't deny the results, man. So I'd say they're failing. You know what I mean? Cincinnati got Jack Dingle last year. I mean, uh, how much is last year's mediocre record hurting our recruiting as Beantown card? Beantown, I'll tell you what. Next time I call up uh, Jamon Tapp, the four star, I'll say, hey, Jamon, how do you feel about the four and eight record that they had last year? Is, is that a good thing for you? <laughs> like, <laughs> What do you guys want me to do? Do you want me to like hip kids to the game here and tell them? Tell, do you want me to negative recruit Louisville? I don't know. Probably not good. It's probably not going four and eight is probably not a good selling point to kids. Going eight and four is probably a lot better than four and eight, especially if you went eight and four and then the next year you went four and eight. I would assume it's having a negative impact on recruiting, but I don't have any empirical data because I'm not going to go out and collect the empirical data by asking the kids, hey, man, uh, what did you think about the fact Louisville only won four games last year? Probably not what you want me to do. Uh, Tron, the legacy. Reading all these questions is the pit of negativity and despair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's quite sad. It is sad. Uh, the questions, it is. Um, how about an update on the speedster from Louisiana? I think his name was Dylan Sampson. I'm probably wrong. Love Dylan Sampson. Dylan Sampson is the guy, you know. Um, and I showed you his film to begin with. You know, let's let that ride again. I mean, let's do it one more time. Let's look at Want to watch the sophomore highlights? I mean, we could do that. Uh, hold on, let's find the sophomore highlights. Okay, they're not readily available. I should have prepared better. I suck at life, but you know, this is this is Dylan Samson right here, man. We got a good shot with Dylan Samson. Look at that. Boom, oh, instinct. I like it. I like it. And hey, Bean Town, that wasn't a straight line he ran in right there. If you noticed, he was cutting. Here's a straight line for you. That's a straight line. There's some straight line running. <laughs> and he's jogging. He's jogging and he's out running those dudes. Let's see if this one's a straight line. A little wildcat action for you. Now, now he's just going to jog to the finish. He's not even running, though. He's just, you know, he's explosive. Good burst. 10-4-8, I believe, is what he ran in the 100-meter dash. 10-4-8. 10-4-8, and somebody came on the board. Somebody, after I posted the fact that this kid ran a 10-4-8 in a 100-meter dash, this kid said, football players usually don't run 40 yards in a straight line. <laughs> Come on, man. What are, we, what are we doing here? What are we, what are we talking about here, bro? Oh, man. You guys are exhausting sometimes, I swear. All right. Uh, anybody besides Popeye setting up an official already answered that. Any update on Kristen Miller? Look, Kristen Miller's a long shot, all right? But the staff is on him. If they pull him, good job. He dropped the top. He said three He said three different schools are recruiting him the hardest and Louisville uh, are, are, are in the best shape for him, something to that effect. I don't remember, but Louisville wasn't one of those three. So they're on the outside looking at any grad transfer names we need to know. I remember Sat mentioned we're looking for a veteran of safety and a nose guard to come in this August for camp. Um, with, with Christian Fitzpatrick transferring, so they didn't have any initial scholarships uh, available last time I did this, but now with Fitzpatrick leaving, they do. So I think that if they don't give it to a walk-on or something like that, I think there's a very good chance that they could, could end up seeing them with a safety or a nose guard. I haven't heard any names they're pursuing, that scholarship just opened up too. So it's too early, but you're on to something there. I think they could look for <clears throat> uh, 
a nose tackle or a safety. It makes sense. I don't know that Satterfield said that. And I know you're, I don't know that he said that. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying it, it does make sense looking at the roster that they would look for a safety or a nose guard. So I'll keep my eye out for that. That's a good question, Vincent. Beantown, um, Mr. They don't run 40 yards straight on the football field much. How many, How much has the lack of high school football last year hurt player evaluation? Good question. What info does the staff rely on to recruit? I think it hurts with this class particularly because junior film is really the thing that coaches look for. That's kind of like the foundation of their decision making as to whether or not they're going to take a kid, honestly. And, um, you know, a lot of teams had their, a lot of schools had their seasons cut short because of Corona. Some started late, some had their entire season canceled. And then these kids didn't get to camp last year going into their junior year, right? Because there were no camps. So like I said before, uh, Louisville hasn't poked any of these kids with a stick. So you got to see them with your eyes. You got you to, you know, get a feel for them in front of you on your practice field. You got to see that if they have flexion or if they're stiff. You got to see if they really are 6'4 or they're 6'1. You got to see if they really are fast. You got to see if they really are tough. Um, you know, they got to see if they compete in one-on-ones, et cetera. Yeah. So I think that's a good question, Beantown, and I think it hurts. It does. It's a, It's not a... It's not a knockout blow, but they're they're in the corner putting some Vaseline on, on, on it, you know. Um, and what info does the staff rely on to recruit? I mean, right now track time would be big. I think they're looking at they're looking at some camps are starting to open up. Maybe they're looking at that stuff. Really, they're probably using coaches and trainers they know to kind of you know during Zoom calls to put a kid on a scale pull out a tape measure or something like that since they can't come to the school and get measured and weighed. And I think that they're looking at sophomore film and whatever limited junior film there is, you're just, they're just making do, you know, you got to adapt and overcome. Uh, so good question being town after I dished you for the, for the, for the uh, hundred yard comment, you come back and you ask probably the best question in the chat. So good job. Uh, Saber says, who's a sleeper 22 prospect we are on that could be sneakily good, like an Ashton Jalodi type of player? I don't know. I haven't really – I've. Been, they're trying to get the big dogs right now. So that's a good question, but it's it's too early to call it. We have to wait until they start grabbing those type of players. You know, like we didn't know about Jalodi till he committed. Then you watch him and you're like, oh, that kid's long. You know, I, I like Raheem Craig too. I thought Raheem Craig could be one of those those – players that slips under the cracks and is because they're edge rushers and they're quick. They got get off. So it's like, they're really good at one thing. You know, they're like Liam Neeson, you know, they have a very particular set of skills. That's very valuable. Uh, Shonda asked me how much wood a wood Chuck can Chuck seven uh, KWC Panther two, four, three, four says we've added coach Cooper, Carolyn McMurray and others to our recruiting staff. When will this, when will the investments pay off? What do we need to do in order to become a program that pulls in top 25 classes annually? Well, let's work backwards. Number one, win. Uh, that's what you need to do to, to pull in top 25 classes annually. Number two, I think that um, keeping your core coaching group together is huge, you know, and the fact that North McKenzie's gone, uh, Shadon Brown is gone, that uh, Ledford is gone, and uh, Frank Ponce is going, I think that hurts because I heard a lot about Ponce. I heard a lot about, I heard a lot about all three of those guys, except Ledford. You don't really hear a lot. I didn't really hear a lot about Ledford. Um, he was strictly like kind of like the O-line dude. But, I, you know, it, it, I would hear Norv and Shadon kind of recruiting everybody, you know, helping out with tight ends and receivers linebackers and stuff like that, right? Um, still have court there, that's good. Um, Stu Hope, still got Mark Ivey, still got Brian Brown, so that's good. Uh, you still have Coach Nicholson, Derek Nicholson, he's still there, who I think has the potential to be a really good recruiter. Um, so, you know, they you just wanna see the core stick together more. And I think that, um, I think the core was Nicholson, Court, Brian Brown, and then Norv, Shadon, and um, 
freaking uh, uh, yeah, that's it. That, that North McKenzie. That's the, I named everybody. So you got to do that stuff. Um, as far as adding Coach Cooper and Carolyn McMurray. I think Carolyn McMurray's job is like a, she's like an event coordinator. You know what I mean? Like, I think she's there to like, and make sure, you know, we're going to, the kids are going to go to Jeff Ruby's and they're going to um, stay with this player or this person is going to be their host. And uh, we're going to do this event and we're going to have them do the 40 at this time. So, and, and she, you know, she talks to the kids and stuff like that, you know, but I don't think she's kind of, she's not like a coach, she's not an on the field coach. And then um, David Cooper is, is also not an on the field coach as well. Uh, so I don't know why you name those two, honestly. Um, the only off field coach I can remember really, really who swung a big stick in recruiting was Stephen Field because he got 2 2. He got um, Jay Hawk. He got, uh, I think he helped get Hicks out of Miami Central. And then, um, the DB from St. Thomas Aquinas at the corner, I forget his name, he's, he's still here, Chandler Jones. I think he had a hand in those four guys, right? But of, of course, you know, Jones, Atwell, and um, Jayhawk all started. And, you know, Tutu and Jayhawk were the offense pretty much. So he had a huge impact. So, you know, hopefully Cooper can come in and do that as well. Uh, when will the investments pay off? I mean, when they start winning, it'll help, but I don't know, man. Like like I said, they haven't seen these kids like that and they haven't poked them with the stick and they haven't, they don't really got good, still have a lot of film. I mean, you don't need a ton of film though, honestly. Like if a kid played four games, you know, that's, if the kid dominated, you got enough film, you know? If the kid played six games, there's def, there should be enough highlights to determine whether or not the kid's good enough to play at your level, you know? So, um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll know more in December. <laughs> uh, but I don't know when I don't know when things are going to pay off, man. If I did, I wouldn't be sitting here doing this video at 453 in my office. All right. And um, that'll do it. That's it for the recruiting chat. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to uh, I don't know. I might put this big board out just as is kind of without any commentary, just so you, you know, whenever somebody asked me something, I'll just point to this and be like, these are the guys. Okay. And it would be a good like reference, you know? So I might just publish this as it is calling a day, but I want to fine tune some things first. Okay. So that's it for this one. Um, thank y'all for subscribing. Um, I'll have another one of these in two weeks. Try to come up with some different questions, you know, don't, don't keep asking me when are thing, when is this going to happen? When are we going to start seeing commitments? And I mean, I answer that every week. And why aren't we recruiting Selah? Because he's a tweener, dude. That's why. Maybe, maybe, maybe if the scholarships expand when that ruling comes back, then we'll know if it's going to be a small class or a big class. We're still waiting on that ruling. Okay. Somebody asked that question in the chat. I forget who it was, but they said, when are we going to know the number of um, if our numbers are going to go up? And it's whenever that ruling comes back about are the seniors going to get like an extra year of eligibility? Is everyone going to get an extra year of eligibility and do the transfer students get to play right away? No matter what that hasn't actually been official yet. So once that's back, they'll know. Right. So until next time, peace. I'm Dave Blackford. Thanks for subscribing to Cardinalsports.com.